Hello everybody, this is Anna Sabramowitz, and today what I wanted to do is tell you how to make your e-learning engaging. And the reason I'm gonna tell you that is because I've seen some really, really, really bad stuff over the years and also lately. <laughs> so before we get started, let me make sure I've got all the feeds open and I can see your comments because that's really, really important to me. And if you can give me feedback that you can hear me and see me, that would be absolutely fantastic. So say hi say where you're visiting from. Also, hey, I see some people there. David, so awesome. All right, so uh, it's kind of funny. You know, uh, people are like, hey, Anna, who, who are you popping up on my feed? Hello, Di. Popping up on my feed, who are you? Um, you know, why should I listen to you? And uh, I just wanna just clarify some things, okay? So uh, I'm gonna give you some tips today about how to make your e-learning engaging. And I'm not doing this because I read a bunch of e-learning books and then I collated all this stuff, the best practices together, and I'm regurgitating it to you as some sort of a, a fun thing, right? No, this has been me uh, working with some of the top companies in the world, like Adidas, like Sony, like Michelin, like ABB, like Thomas and & Betts, and really like practicing this stuff, hitting my head against the wall, working with uh, humanitarian organizations, working with re like the gamut has been full, right? And what has been amazing throughout this time is that I've discovered certain frameworks and systems that I now teach to others that basically what they do is they're letting you uh, benefit from, from this, um, from this 10 year experience of me working with all these different organizations uh, so that, because I've discovered there are frameworks and systems that actually work across the board. So a lot of people will say, yeah, I don't know if this will work for me because I'm in this sector or the humans I deal with are not you know, engaged with stories or the humans I deal with are really, uh, they're really serious. The humans I deal with don't watch Game of Thrones, right? And I'm like, okay, that's cool let me pull off a case study for you, right? So um, one of the things that I always do when I talk to people on these uh, live sessions, and you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for saying where you're from. That's so cool. I got uh, Valerie, Valencia, uh, David Colt, and Nicholas. Sweet. All right. And we've got Sherry and Krista. Okay, cool. I've got people all over the place, and uh, I love that they're joining me live. So usually when I talk to uh, to people, and I have strategy sessions and you can sign up for one. But when I when I talk to people, and it's funny because, um, you know, uh, one of the, the kinds of people that I attract is people who are already uh, quite good at what they do, but they've hit a plateau, right? And they need to take themselves to the next level, but are just looking for that guidance and the help. And usually what I'll do is I'll say, okay, so what are you us already using to get really uh, serious engagement in your courses, right? And it's funny, because I know somebody's gonna mess it up right away if the first thing they tell me is the software they're using to create engagement. So they'll be like, yeah, I use Beyond. And I'm like, okay, all right, we've got a lot to talk about here. And why do I say that, right? Like, why are you like, oh my gosh, what, <laughs> what's, <laughs> Beyond is cool. And I'm like, you know what? I love all that stuff, but it doesn't matter if you're using VR, Beyond, uh, illustrations, if you're using uh, narration, whatever that is, whatever you think is gonna make that engagement, it's it's the spice you put on top, right? Most most of the things that will will actually create real engagement for your learners is not the sexy software you're using because in effect, all you're doing is you're creating a, a glorified candy crush saga out there, but you're not actually engaging people deeply on a level that'll actually make them want to finish, right? Because if you're creating just a glorified candy crush saga, then why in the world would they be sticking around? They could just go to the real thing and play with their friends, <laughs> right? So what I want to talk to you about today is how do you actually create something that actually engages people deeply? and some strategies you can take away and implement right away to make that happen. Because if you are relying on, you know, the, the, 
if the delight, if all the delight in your learning comes from people looking at animated uh, Vyond characters, you're creating crap because, and I get that. Listen, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> because some of the people in our community, uh, they've been putting out amazing looking stuff for years. And you know why? Because the storyboards they were handed were so bad and such content dumps and they, they didn't know how, how they could potentially make it even better. So what they did is they were like, okay, you know what? This is terrible. And I want to, you know, like <laughs> poke my eyes out. I don't, this is boring me and I'm on page one, but what I can do is I can really make this sexy looking, right? So they'll, they'll really amp up their uh, visuals, uh, visual communication skills, their, their technological skills, right? They'll, they'll include, they'll like, I'm going to learn this kind of stuff. I'm going to learn video scribe. I'm going to learn, um, Powtoon. I'm going to learn beyond because what I have here is just, you know, I can't even bear it. So can I add something here that makes it a better experience for somebody? What can I do? Right. And they'll focus on that visual aspect, the interactivity aspect. And the thing is that after a while, what happens is when they see this beautiful learning and you see a lot of it out there, they think that that's what it takes to actually make an engaging e-learning experience. And I'm telling you right now that that's not the truth. And this comes from years of me working with organizations that had amazing looking learning and nobody was engaging and there was nothing happening after they went through. They just went on to the next experience. And the challenge with the fact that you're using this shallow type of engagement, this design is that every time you launch something new, it better be damn better looking than the last thing. And you'd better be wowing me every single time. But it's kind of funny because, you know, every time I pick up a book, right, just a plain old book, I don't need to have new font in there. In fact, I prefer old font, uh, the font I used before, right? I don't need uh, the book to have different kinds of sizes of pages or anything like that. I know that the book will deliver because it's got a great story, great narrative, and it's meaningful to me. And so you don't want to, like, there's a lot of people in this hamster wheel, right? They're getting something, it's not good, and they're trying to make it amazing with graphics and visuals because they haven't been given the autonomy or they don't know how to turn that initial product and the power in that initial product to make it meaningful and engaging for somebody from the get-go because then when you add amazing interactivity from the software, when you add um, visual communication that means something, holy crap, does that take off? Because now you've got this amazing pilot flame that's strong and true and you're just pouring on the gas and it's going and I've seen this happen in organizations. I've actually seen things go viral, which is unusual, right? And one of the things that's really cool is when things go so viral and then you meet with the stakeholders and they look at you and you're like, your stuff is so good and has had so much impact. We're actually making everybody at the company go back, whether they're seasoned or not, and they're going through this training. Now that, and that's the kind of compliment I've gotten. Of course, I turned beet red and I was like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> you don't expect that. But imagine having those wins. And I, wanna, I want you to have those wins, okay? So here's, and, and, and the thing is, I think that, you know, one of the things that has actually happened in our community is we have a lot of people who have excellent skill sets. Like if you look at their stuff, they're, they're like top of the line. But now what they're doing is they're realizing that that's just one part of a bigger picture. And now they're having to unlearn some of those bad habits as far as let's just pepper on the magic and say, hey, what's the foundation? Is this a really good foundation for me? Right? And so as I'm going through this, if you have questions about, you know, how you can incorporate this for your projects, if you're thinking, Anna, but what about this? Anna, but here's where I'm stuck. Anna, but um, have you ever encountered this kind of situation? Post it in the comments. I will answer it. If not in this live, then I will, I always read your comments and your questions and I usually incorporate them into my next live and I come on live every, every single day, except I think Sunday, whatever. Um, or is it Saturday? I don't know. Just keep you guessing. So, um, okay. So if 
I want you to consider, right, what e-learning is at its essence. And we've, we've done it, we've messed it up, right? One of the things we do is we take a whole bunch of text, right? <laughs> and we put it into a box. Sometimes we even put it in a box that looks like a computer. So you're looking at two computers at the same time. Oh my God. Anyways, we put it in the box and then we say, you know, and I'm going to even make this experience even more painful for you. I'm going to make you have to click to get to the next page because somebody, somebody BSedly invented this whole term death by scrolling. No such thing. Never, never have I ever uh, met a website where if I had to go click next, I wasn't pissed off. I like to scroll. I like to read. I like beautiful, big, juicy, readable text that adjusts. When you're sharing content that's instructional, why in the world would you put it into boxes and make me flip the cards? What's the point? You know what the point is? Control. <laughs> Did they go through all the pages? Whether they read it, understood it or not, doesn't matter. So this is how e-learning has been. This is traditional e-learning and it comes from uh, this, this whole idea of when we had, you know, just developed rapid e-learning software and, um, Hey, we were all seduced. Trust me this. I'm not talking about this because I'm, you know, standing on my soapbox. Cause I think I discovered something from a book. I actually made this ugly stuff. I made things that people had to click through and painfully so. And so then all of a sudden you're like, man, you know, how, how can I make this page sexy? How can I add more pictures? How can I make the UI more engaging? How can I, uh, how can I wrap this up in some sort of a, a click and reveal interaction? And there's tons of them to make this interesting for somebody while really all they're doing is clicking a screen or dragging things to read more info. Like imagine that this is what we're doing, right? Boggles my mind. Now, what should e-learning really be? If you take away this idea of that institutional instructional design mindset, which is content, blah, 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 blah. And you think, okay, this person's in a space by themselves, able to really interact with the screen in a safe place. I can create any world for them really. And it doesn't even have to be a simulation. It can be, it can be, I can give you a scenario through words, right? And let's say, what I think about is that right now I'm trying to put you in an experience that helps you navigate the world better. That has nothing to do with content, right? That has everything to do with decision making. Because when you think about your life, it's not when you think about your day, how you got here today, right? It wasn't because you opened up a book and you read a whole bunch of stuff and your day somehow manifested itself. It's you making a decision after decision after decision after decision, right? You woke up, you got out of bed, put on your slippers or maybe went barefoot. You went to the bathroom first or you made yourself a coffee. Every single moment of your day, you are making a decision. And so if you think about this environment that you're creating, can I help in this space people make better decisions? Imagine if that's all you did with your e-learning is you helped people make better decisions that would over time help them live better lives. Crazy, right? Now, you can't just have decisions, right? Decisions are one thing. They are autonomy. They are empowering. Um, that's why games like, you know, um, any game really is so powerful, but they realized you can't just make decisions out of context. You got to have a narrative, right? You got to have a story that drives you forward. Why? You will, your brain, right? And I've talked about this so many times. Your brain is hooked for story, right? But the thing is that because the story creates an open loop and allows me to actually look at the world through somebody else's eyes, not my own, somebody else's eyes, I'm able to reflect on that story. I'm able to observe that person make decisions on their behalf, but they're not me, right? A good story doesn't put you in the driving seat. A good story lets you experience the world through somebody else's eyes. And so what happens there is because I 
engage with that person, because I engage with their quest, those decisions matter to me. They're not just random, right? So imagine if from now on, all you did was anytime somebody approached you and said, we need some training, you'd say, okay, so when this training is done, what can I observe about that person? What are they doing differently that is actually going to show to me that you've achieved that vision? That you, like, what's the champagne moment, right? As I call it. And if they say, you know, this person is now able to kind of, let's say this came up in a strategy session the other day, this person is able to uh, have better relationships, right? And you're like, oh, okay, that's really cool. Now, in order to prepare that person to have better relationships, let's say with their team, should I give them a whole bunch of texts to click through? Or should I give them an opportunity to interact with people as a character who maybe has little experience crafting those relationships? And now I put them through a story where they can imagine themselves becoming better at this craft. And all the content I have about relationship building, conversation styles, persuasion, all those things, I provide to them in an easy to read, accessible format that they can access when they're ready because the story and the interactivities and the choices that they made in that interactivity actually made them realize that they wanna learn more because they have some gaps or inspired them to learn more because they could see themselves in that future that I sold to them in that story. Think about that. That would be the best, wouldn't it? Imagine if every single time you enter this space of e-learning, there is, there is just an opportunity for you to practice doing, making decisions, practice making them in a real world, real world context. There's no leprechauns, there's no pirates, there's no dojo, there's no themes. It's you as a, an adult in the workplace making decisions that you would see yourself in in the future. And it's kind of cool because you know, there's a reason why people use themes. There's a reason why we use pirates and leprechauns and whatever. Because if something's really contextual and meaningful, and you've sold me on that story, I, you know, I actually think it's really cool. Like when I read uh, stories uh, about people going through everyday things, I don't need them to be pirates or princesses or other things. I connect with them on a deep level. And if their story paints a picture for me that I can imagine myself in in the future, especially for work, I've sold myself on that journey. And what it also does is anything else that you provide to them afterwards, even if your content is not as sexy, you know, even if your content is, is uh, not as well written, but now they're ready for it. And you don't have to wrap it up in some sort of a fancy player you can actually just give it to them as if a Kindle book or a really helpful tutorial, right? We're embellishing the wrong things. We're focusing on the wrong things. So ask yourself those questions. If somebody is going to use this content in the most effective way, what's it gonna help them accomplish? And can I create a space where applying this and making good decisions is actually gonna be useful? That is the purpose of e-learning. So stop putting content in boxes and having people click through it because that's that has it's not respectful of their time and it's not helping them develop the skills it's helping them learn how to click right but really life is about decisions so your e-learning should be helping them make better decisions see the consequences of those decisions in a safe place and where appropriate giving them some guidance an opportunity to reflect to say hey i wonder if i'm doing this in my life or I wonder if I could do this this way this character did. Hmm, maybe that could be me, right? You want them to, to feel that. And that's the connection you create. And then whatever comes after, it, they're ready for it. They're excited for it. They're like, man, look, I saw, you know, there's this, this guy in this, this training. I got to see the story of Jim. And Jim really wasn't a really good sales guy. And he was, you know, he was having trouble at home. And he came in with a really poo-poo attitude. And then I helped him see that he could do things that he didn't think he was ready for and he made some good decisions and and in the outcome he actually you know he got over it and he's actually doing better that 
could be me. I wonder if I'm doing some of these things. I wonder if I could learn to be like Jim. And, you know, I don't have the same character flaws, of course not, but I definitely could try. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if there's any training on this at all. Like, is there any tutorials or learning that I could, you know, polish up my sales skills? See the difference? So, if this is something you wanna get awesome at, and if this is the kind of approach that you're like, whoa, okay, shift, pivot, holy crap, Anna, I like it, and I can't wait to get into this, but you don't know how to get started or you need some guidance, guess what? I've been doing this for years. We have a community of awesome practitioners who are kicking butt, taking names. I need five more people to join me for the end of April. I'm interviewing for those right now. And if this sounds like something you wanna be a part of, go for it, right? I have a, I'll put a link to, for you to join me on that strategy session. Cause I gotta learn more about what you do, what your vision is. And the thing I want you to consider is that I figured this out, right? And it's, you can do this on your own, but right now, especially for some people is really the time to double down on this because everybody's going digital. I have students tell me every day, they're like, man, my whole company, like we went digital over the weekend, right? <laughs> Crazy. But after the dust settles, everybody's gonna have a whole bunch of terrible digital crap out there, to be honest, right? But then how are you gonna engage people to actually want to go through it again? Because you're gonna set some precedent right now, right? You're gonna set some precedent. The precedent also has been set. It's boring. Anytime you say e-learning to anybody, they roll their eyes, they wanna kill themselves, literally because it's terrible, it sucks, it doesn't add value. Imagine if when they're ready to engage and they're saying, we have an LMS full of stuff and nobody's looking at it, if you can say, guess what? I've got a strategy and it doesn't mean making all of that more sexy, it means engaging people in the right way through interactive stories. Boom, right? If that resonates with you, I wanna talk to you. If you're the kind of person who believes that this is not just for a project, like this is for their career, this is for their life because it's about fulfillment. That's the kind of community I'm building. And those are the kinds of people that are in it. It's people who don't do this because their boss told them to. Uh, they're doing this because they love the process. They want impact and they're just feeling stuck because you can add all the you know, beyond things to your e-learning, but if at the base it sucks, oh God, there's just, what's the point, right? And, and if, if you're feeling like, like you're stuck there, guess what? In about three months, you're gonna feel like you're going backwards. So if you wanna move fast to the next level and benefit from the community of people who are, have actually been doing this for a while, let's talk, all right? So I hope this was helpful I hope you got a couple of ahas. If you did, and you're watching this now or after, uh, please post your questions in the comments or your ahas so everybody else can see like, oh man, I better watch that live session even though it's like so way down in my feed. <laughs> because this is the way we gotta start thinking about it. E-learning is no longer a digital book, a digital content dump. E-learning is an experience. And it doesn't mean you have to create a virtual world. It means that you have to craft decisions that help people make meaningful choices. That's it, right? If I could just, I'm gonna have that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got some value out of it. Uh, I hope we talk soon if this is something you wanna pursue. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll see you here again tomorrow. All right, take care friends.